Hey, what's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be taking a look at the XDO Pantera Pico PC. Some of my viewers might recognize this Pico PC because a few months ago I actually did a little bit of a review on it, but unfortunately it never came to Indiegogo due to supply chain issues, but uh, since then all of that's been fixed and they've actually done some upgrades to this little PC. Now, as you can see, this is an ultra compact Windows 10 or Linux mini PC. And with the original version I took a look at, the built-in heatsink here was actually aluminum. With the newer models that are being produced right now, it's a full copper design, so it's going to keep that chip nice and cool. Now, what we're taking a look at right now is the base kit. It comes with the Pantera Pico PC and a power supply. We have 8 gigs of RAM, quad-core Intel CPU, and it's running Windows 10 out of the box. But they're also offering some different packages that you can pick up like this one here. This is the top of the line package, and they've included a ton of different accessories for the Pantera Pico PC. So we get the carrying case, and the first thing I noticed when I opened this up was two extra little packages. First one being a portable battery pack for the PC itself, so you don't have to be plugged into wall power. This is a 12 volt battery bank, so you can actually carry the Pantera anywhere you go. Next package in here was a fold-out keyboard, and the exterior actually matches the color of the PC you choose. They're offering several different variants of this. This one just happens to be their rose gold model. This is a Bluetooth keyboard, and it'll connect to basically anything, even if you wanted to use it with your Android phone. We'll obviously receive the Pico PC itself. We get a power supply, HDMI cable, and one thing that I actually thought was pretty cool and a little different from other mini PC manufacturers that I've seen, they're including a Pico projector. Now this does run Android right out of the box, but it does have HDMI in, so we can plug this mini PC in, and you can run everything from battery power. Like I mentioned, this projector also runs Android. It has access to Google Play, so you can install your favorite apps there. It's got a built-in speaker and a built-in battery. And I know this isn't the best filming scenario here, but it actually looks pretty good to the naked eye. Let me go ahead and unplug this, and as you can see, we still have that projector running. And one thing that I thought was really cool about this thing was the top of the unit itself is a touch panel, so we can use that as a mouse. Moving back over to the mini PC, on the front here we have a micro SD card slot, two USB 3.0 ports, and we have our power button up front plus an LED indicator. Not much going on around each side here, but around back we have our USB Type-C for power in only, full-size HDMI, one USB 2.0 port, and another USB 3.0 port. And when this thing's powered up, we do have a blue LED ring around the top there. When it comes to the specs for the CPU, it's using the Intel Celeron J4125. This is a quad-core x86 CPU up to 2.7 GHz. The GPU is the built-in Intel UHD 600 up to 750 MHz. 8 GB of non-user replaceable LPDDR4 RAM running at 2133 MHz. A 256 GB M.2 drive plus we have that micro SD card. AC Wi-Fi, Bluetooth 4.2, and out of the box is running Windows 10 Home, but you can always install Linux on this thing. Overall, I do like the design of this little PC. It looks pretty good. It's definitely small enough. We have actually a lot of I.O. given that it's such a small little unit, but really, when it comes down to it, we need to see how this thing performs. As you can see, we have that J4125, 8 gigs of RAM, 256 gigabyte M.2 SSD, and those built-in Intel UHD graphics. So uh, straight off the bat, let's check out some web browsing. I am connected to my 5 gigahertz network. This does have AC Wi-Fi built in. When it comes to web browsing on the 4125, I've really never run into any issues. I mean, everything's been quick enough as long as you have a decent internet connection. If this had Ethernet built in, it would be a lot better. That way I could get a wired connection. But with that AC Wi-Fi built in, it does a pretty decent job, as you can see. I mean, it'll load everything right up. Next on the list, let's check out some video playback from YouTube. Let me get this ready. We'll go full screen. Uh, 4K. Stats for nerds. And uh, as you can see, we did have 82 drop frames out of 83 out of 900. That's really for the load in. So real quick, let me just go ahead and set this to 1080, I'll go back to 4K, give it a second to buffer in, and then I'll hit play again, just to be safe. And yeah, just as I thought, I mean, as long as you get buffered in, this thing will handle 4K60 quite well. And in the past, testing these little mini PCs with the J4125, 
it's done a pretty good job. So I mean, if we're doing 4K here, it'll do 2K and 1080. It's definitely a snappy little mini PC, and you know, this thing was not designed for gaming, but uh, we're definitely going to test out some gaming and emulation. Let's go with something really easy to run, Minecraft. Here's the Windows Store version. We're at 12 chunks, and as you can see, we are at 60 FPS, and I really expected it to run it this well. This is a very well-optimized game. It's definitely been on the market for a while, and Microsoft has gone through and made sure that this does work pretty well on low-end chips. Next on the list, Skyrim. This is the original version, 720p, low settings, and I really thought that we'd get a little more out of it. I thought I'd at least be able to get an average of 30, especially at those low settings, but uh, unfortunately, we got an average of 23 FPS out of this one. Left 4 Dead 2 did a little bit better, but uh, we're still at 720p, low settings. We got an average of 31 FPS. And finally, Half-Life 2, and yeah, I know I'm testing older games, that's because this is a low-end chip. With Half-Life, 720p, low settings, we can get an average of around 85 FPS, and this thing runs on basically anything, so I thought we'd get good performance out of it. So obviously it's definitely not made to run your favorite PC games, but uh, what about emulation? Here we have Dreamcast using the ReDream emulator at 1280 by 960 DOA2, which seems to be one of the harder ones to emulate with this emulator on lower end chips, we're at 60. I mean, it's running it just fine. I haven't noticed any dips at all. And even when there's a lot of effects on screen, it still powers through. Moving over to a little bit of PSP emulation using the standalone version of PPSSPP, 3x resolution, Vulcan back in, this is Soul Calibur Broken Destiny, and we're running at full speed. When it comes to the harder to emulate games like Ghost of Sparta or Chains of Olympus, you will have to drop this down to 1x on either Vulcan or DX11, but it will run it. And the final thing I wanted to test here was a little bit of GameCube emulation using the Dolphin emulator. This isn't going to run every GameCube game at full speed, but there's still a lot of easier to emulate games that'll run at full speed, native resolution, using the Vulcan back in. So overall, what we have here is an x86-based mini PC. We do have a little more RAM than some of the other manufacturers, and more I.O. I do like the look of this thing. The exterior case is aluminum. We have plastic on top and the bottom, but the heatsink that they chose to use in here is doing a much better job with this J4125 than a lot of the other mini PCs that I've tested. Because when it comes down to it, through all of the testing you saw in this video, I only reached a maximum of 72 degrees Celsius with this little chip here. Power consumption on this device is also really low. Idle, 4.7 watts, 4K video playback, 9.3, and the maximum that I could get this to pull from the wall using a kilowatt meter was 17.8 watts, and that's really what it maxes out when gaming. So for them to include a battery pack with their higher-end kit definitely makes sense. I mean, it'll run on that battery for a while. So if you're interested in picking something like this up or learning more, I will leave a couple links in the description. But remember, I mean, we can already pick up a J4125 mini PC. There are several different manufacturers on the market making these PCs. They don't quite look like this, and none of them really offer a big package like they do with that projector and battery and everything like that. But in the end, I mean, it's really up to you. If you're looking for an ultra-small, low-power consumption Windows PC, for email checking, web browsing, 4K video playback, some very light gaming, and decent emulation, then the XDO Pantera Pico PC might be something you might want to look into. But that's going to wrap it up for this video. I really appreciate you watching. If there's anything else you want to see running on this mini PC, be it, uh, you know, more gaming, more emulation, or even just a whole nother operating system installed on this, let me know in the comments below. But that's it for this one. And like always, thanks for watching.